Hello, everybody. Welcome to this session of Research Skills Refresh. Uh, today, we are going to be talking about operations and filters, uh, database operations and filters to be exact. Uh, my name is Liz Voda. I am the Instruction and Outreach Librarian, um, and I deal mainly with undergrad um, instruction and outreach. Um, so we're going to kind of get a base level understanding. It's still going to be kind of theoretical, but I will show you um, a little a little mini demo of a couple of different databases just to give you an idea about how these uh, tools work. So um, coming up, we're going to talk about kind of in two parts. P part one, we're going to focus on what database operators are. Sometimes they're called Boolean operators um, because they are technically named after a mathematician named George Bool. Um, but we're going to talk about what those are, how they work, and how you actually kind of like combine them into a search string in order to be most effective. And then in part two, we are going to talk about, again, what database filters are, some of the common filters that you will see on library databases, and, you know, when you should use filters and when you may you maybe shouldn't. Um, so to get started, let's talk about Boolean operators, as I said. Our database operators are a subset of Boolean operators. So Boolean operators, um, again, are conjunctions that kind of combine or exclude keywords while searching. Um, there are more than what are used in uh, database searching, but um, they're typically used in things like logic, math. A lot of computer science is actually based on Boolean logic. Uh, but the three that are going to be used in pretty much all databases and even search engines like Google or Bing, uh, DuckDuckGo, those kind of things, uh, they use the operators and, or, and not, okay? Um, so let's talk about and first. So and is an inclusive operator, meaning that search that sources that are returned with an AND search are going to include all of those search terms. It is also the default operator. So if you don't put any operators into your search, search string, the database will automatically assume that it is AND. It will automatically assign that um, as the operator. And some advanced search, so if you look at the, those example search strings, they're basically doing the exact same thing, okay? So the first one, divorce, grade point average, high school. We'll talk about why I'm putting quotation marks around those in a little bit. Um, but that's that's kind of that, if you type that in, the database is going to assume that you actually mean the second set or the second example. So di divorce and grade point average and high school, okay? So again, it's inclusive. It's going to be what the search term, what you want to include, what you're, oh, sorry. It's going to include all those search terms in the results, in the sources that you are finding. All right. Or is expansive, okay? Um, so or you are going to use when you need to include alternate keywords, things that are like synonyms for the original term, or maybe um, things that are kind of um, close to it. So again, things like depression or anxiety, a lot of those, uh, those two, um, uh, mental health issues sometimes kind of come together a lot. So a lot of the times you'll see those two there um, or is not a default. So you're going to actually have to add it into your search string. And I'll show you how to do that um, in order for the databases to actually recognize that you want to use it. Okay. And is a default or is not. Um, and so for example, the search strings down here, we have grade point average or academic achievement, right? So grade point average is often um, kind of associated with academic achievement. It's not necessarily a synonym, but again, they are pretty closely related. So you might see um, research that's being done on one or the other that will mention, or that, and they will be kind of related to what you want. Um, or you could have more close synonym. So like divorce or separation, right? So divorce parents are separated. Separation is kind of a step onto the way to the divorce a lot of time. Um, so something like that you might want to use. Um, or is also really good for um, looking at acronyms. So post-traumatic stress disorder, as well as PTSD. So PTSD or post-traumatic stress, stress disorder. Um, also things like uh, kind of more scientific terms versus, you know, um, terms that everybody use uses. So for example, my favorite example of this is just because of the way that this sounds, myocardial infarction is, you know, the medical term for a heart attack, right? So sometimes using those two terms together might bring back 
uh, additional sources. Um, they might not be the same uh, kind of caliber of source that you want, but things to think about. All right, the last operator is not. So not is exclusive and you're going to use it to exclude search terms from your results. So not is kind of the opposite of and. Again, it is not a default. Um, so you're going to have to specifically include it in your search string in order to use it. Um, and one thing to note with not is that it may exclude relevant results depending on how strict your database or search engine is. So the little um, icon or the little picture illustration that we have here, um, it is going to, uh, see like an annotation up here. Okay, um, so right now, not is, uh, the, illustration, the illustration here is saying that not, if you include it, is just going to include like sources that have this, okay? Sometimes it will also, depending on what database, sometimes they'll also include items that are here, um, but it's really going to, again, depend on kind of how, um, kind of um, strict or sensitive your database is. Some of them are a little bit more lenient. Some of them are like, you know, you have to give us exactly what you want. So things to consider um, and the exact, uh, see. Um, and the example search string that we have here is something like if you want high school, but not junior high school, right? Like if you're trying to look at students who have, um, are dealing with divorce and GPAs and in high school, but they're not, you know, you're, you're kind of keeping them to a, a more specific age range. Okay. All right. Um, so, I mentioned this and you saw this a little bit earlier, um, it's called phrase searching. So phrase searching is, it's not exactly a Boolean operator, but it is some of the syntax that you will use in a search string. And this is a really powerful one. This is one that I suggest students use a lot and get into the habit of using quite a bit. So it allows you to narrow your search by specifying an order in which the keyword should appear. Um, and it's going to kind of turn the separated the separate words into just one phrase, which is why it's called phrase searching. So you're going to put quotation marks, uh, sometimes they're called double quotes, around two or more words in order to make that phrase. Okay, as we said in last week's uh, on you know kind of search strategies, it's always a good idea to keep it kind of as nouns or noun phrases for the most part. Point so. Um, also, phrase searching can be really good for searching for a specific title. So if I wanted the book um, uh, To Kill a Mockingbird, for example, if I put quotation marks around To Kill a Mockingbird, it's going to know that I want, you know, that specific phrase. In um, So the, the examples on this screen, we have grade point average without those quotation marks is going to make the database look for grade and point and average meaning that it could bring back, you know, articles that talk about an average of grades on standardized tests, right? Now, if you put quotation marks around the whole phrase grade point average, it should bring back articles that talk about GPA or, you know, the kind of um, average student, average overall grade for a particular student, right, from regular classwork. For, so not from standardized tests, not from like um, the MCAT or the LSAT, it's actually talking about more holistically the grades that the students are earning in school. Okay. All right, so how do you combine and put all this together? You're going to kind of need to organize your search screen string into groups of related keywords. This is called nesting. And you can kind of think it about that it's similar to order of operations in mathematics, right? So please excuse my dear ex, ex and Sally, parentheses, exponents, all that kind of stuff. Um, most databases are actually going to use parentheses to kind of group words together. Um, and it's typically a good idea to put not at the end of your string, okay? Because what happens is databases typically read your string from left to right, okay? And unless they see um, those kind of parentheses around specific area, around spe specific um, groups of key terms, they're just going to go read it straight. 
straight across and just kind of um, base the order on whatever that next operator is without any grouping. So let's look an example of what this could look like. All right. So we've got the first one, divorce and grade point average or academic achievement and high school, right? What this is telling the database to do is that it wants you to look for sources that talk about divorce and grade point average or sources that talk about academic achievement in high school. So it's actually kind of split that string right down the middle, okay? And it's grouping it, divorce and grade point average together, and then it's grouping academic achievement in high school together, all right? But grade point average and academic achievement are related terms. So what we actually want the database to do is to search for those two words kind of um, is grouped together, right? Or like we want to group those together. So the second option down here is what we should look like. Divorce and parentheses, grade point average or academic achievement, close parentheses, and high school, okay? So again, this is gonna bring back sources that contain the keyword divorce, the key phrase high school, and either key phrase grade point average or academic achievement. Makes sense. Okay, it, it does get easier. And actually, you don't actually necessarily need to know how to order these things because um, a lot of advanced search options will kind of help you build these searches. Um, you're gonna treat each line of an advanced search screen as kind of like one grouping of keywords or key phrases. So let's take a look at some examples here. And I'm gonna switch over. We're gonna look at... Um, the search box on the library's homepage, psych info and select like articles, we have it grouped so that those two bat databases are searched together. And then we're finally gonna end on Web of Science just to give you kind of um, a, shall we say, sampling of the different databases and what they look like. So let's get to the library homepage here. All right, so bump this up a little bit so you can see. On the library homepage, you could just start with a basic search, right? We could type things in here right off the bat. However, if you click on advanced search, you're actually going to kind of be given these road, these kind of tools that you want to use. So again, in here, you we start off with um, two different lines. So if we wanted to put divorce up here, and then you will see that we have and as that operator right out the front of the line. And this is down where we put something like grade point, average, excuse me, or academic achievement. Yes, of course, I never remember that spelling rule. Now, there's only two lines, Liz, but we have another thing that we wanna to add to our search. Totally fine. We can add a new line here. And again, it starts with that and, though if we wanted to change this, we could, okay? So we're gonna leave it as and right now. Um, you'll notice that I actually did put or in there. Um, and so again, grouping like terms kind of in the same line, the same box, that's a really good way to do it. So you might have to kind of remember to type or in there. Um, and again, it's gonna make sure that those are grouped together. And then finally, let's put down here, high school. Um, and even we could throw on, you know, a knot of, junior high school. All right. So, and you'll see that actually this, our homepage search box, what it does is it's going to um, kind of show that it talks about. So it's any field divorce, any field that contains divorce, any field that contains, you know, these two grade point average or academic achievement, any uh, field that contains high school. Oh, and then actually we wanted to make sure that we have a not not any field that contains junior high. Okay, so it's kind of building in that um, syntax for you. And when we click search, what should come up are results that are gonna talk about what actually happens, okay? Um, so this is kind of the homepage search box. Um, this is where a lot of people get started because it is an interdisciplinary search. So you are gonna find things from psychology, education, other areas too in this. 
um, probably with our search string, you're going to be really focusing on, you know, uh, social work, uh, education, psychology, those kind of things. But let's go in and actually look at psych info and psych articles. So this is an EBSCOhost product. Um, it's one of several databases that we see through EBSCOhost. In psych uh, info and articles, again, EBSCO has this kind of basic search, but you can click on advanced search and you will see that you can again add in these terms as you go. And you'll notice that the kind of functionality be switching between and or not is really similar to what you saw on from the homepage search box, okay? Um, I'm not actually gonna do the search in here just yet. We're gonna actually switch over here and show you Web of Science. So Web of Science is um, one of the premier science databases in the world. Um, and you'll notice that again, it starts with just one box here, right? But you can again, add some rows in additionally, and then you're gonna be able to choose between those different operators um, and help kind of build that search. So this is pretty standard across most academic databases. Um, and it these operators will look, will also work kind of in Google, but there's different syntax and other search engines will have some different syntax that you'll need to look at too. But we're gonna focus on library databases now, okay? All right, so let's switch back here to my presentation and let's focus on and switch over to database filters. So database filters are basically options to exclude sources that don't fit your criteria. You actually use filters all the time when you online shop, right? Um, think about the last time you were like at Walmart or Amazon or maybe Best Buy, and you were looking for a particular maybe brand or color, a price range, right? So those filters are kind of built into a lot of our online shopping experiences. They're also based and actually those online shopping experiences are just databases, right? They're just a different kind of database. So in the library database, the types of filters that we use um, are gonna be you know, more specific to academic publishing and research. Um, sometimes these filters are called limiters, um, but they're, those terms are pretty much interchangeable. And different search tools and databases will have different filters. Some are going to be more specialized than others, especially when, when you get into um, subject specific or academic discipline specific uh, databases like PsychInfo and Psych Articles and Web of Science, they will have um, more specific filters than the library homepage search box, the, the search box on the homepage does. Okay. Um, there are some common filters that you find in library databases, though. So um, things like a publication type. So whether it's a, an article that's published in a journal. Is it a book? Is it a dissertation? Is it an archival research uh, resource? Is it coming from uh, a newspaper, for example? Okay, publication year is off is also a really common one that you'll see. Um, subject or subject headings is something you'll also see, and things like language. Okay, those are pretty common. There are some other ones, but those four you will definitely see a lot. When can you use filters? Um, you can actually use start to use filters while you're creating an advanced search, right? Um, so sometimes you can specify that keyword should be found in a specific area of a record or a source. So things like if you want to make sure that um, this is the author's name, for example, or maybe you want to make sure that a term is coming up in an abstract, which you get as a summary of a journal article. So it's more likely to be it's more likely to talk about that term, right? Maybe you wanna make sure that that word is a subject term that you're using, okay? And a lot of the time you can actually specify a date range, a language or a publication type. So let me switch back over here to um, our homepage search. So if I wanted to go up here and uh, switch, oops, excuse me, switch out my search criteria here, you can actually see that, you know, things like if I wanted to make sure that these are journals, books, articles, all that's there. Um, if I wanted to specify a particular language, I can. Um, you can also do a date and month. Sometimes you can get as specific as day, month, year. Sometimes it's just year. Sometimes it's just month, year. Again, it depends on what those um, options are, okay? And even on things like EBSCOhost, um, or I'm sorry, psych info and psych articles, you have, you know, your um, 
search kind of builder boxes up at the top. But if you scroll down, you can also see some of these things. So you can see just year of publication. If you want to get more specific about that, you can do it, uh, do that. Um, you can limit to things like age group or methodology because psych info and psych articles really good in, are focused on psychology, right? You can even do pop population groups. So there's a lot of different things that you can add on to um, and filter out initially from your search in a subject specific database. Web of Science, again, is, um, is a science database, but it's a kind of basic search here. You can automatically add a date range. If you go to advanced search, it's gonna ask you a lot more questions and it's actually going to kind of want you to be more fluent in writing Boolean search strings than maybe you're comfortable with, okay? So again, the different databases are coming from different companies and so how they operate works a little bit differently, but the underlying logic between and, or, and not is there, okay? Um, they tried to do try to help you a little bit so that you can add in, you know, author title thing or, but, or publication date. Uh, but again, it's not as kind of pulled out as something with um, psych info's really specific um, concentration. All right. Now, the other time that you can use filters is actually while you are looking at a results list from either, you know, results that you either got through a basic search or from an advanced search. Okay. Um, they're typically going to be on the left side menu. So you should be kind of familiar about where those are coming from. Um, some of the filters are will duplicate things that you could do on an advanced search page. So you could limit to journals. You could limit by a date range, typically right at the top. Uh, and you will also typically have more than the initial advanced screen or search page a lot of the time. Um, and they are, again, often specialized to a search tool. Okay. So looking back here at our uh, search results from the library homepage, pardon. All right. So you see that we do have things here. Um, but you can scroll down a little bit and you see, oh, we, you know, might want to change this from, say, 20, 1971 uh, up to something more recent. So, say, 20, uh, let's do 18 and hit refine. And it's going to take out things that are, you know, published outside of that date range. Okay. There are other things like making sure that's coming from an article. Um, again, that things like language or publication title. Publication title is not something that we saw necessarily in that um, advanced search um, option at the right off the bat. Okay, let me do a um, really quick search in psych articles here or psych info just to give you an idea of what's going on here. And we'll put in, we're gonna do a little bit different here. Okay. Um, and so we could add in some things, but I'm just gonna show you the filters that come back um, with psych info here. So again, we got a lot of results. So maybe we want to limit our date range. Some databases will have this cute little slider that you can actually get to about what you want. Um, again, things like publication or source type, things like major subject headings, you know, and again, a lot of these are going to be um, either related to those filters that you can put on bef in, during an advanced search. But since we're in a psychology database, things like a methodology, uh, you know, is it a quantitative or a qualitative study? These things are going to be important to that discipline. So they will have filters that are like that. Okay, let's do a search in um, Web of Science, just so you can, again, see that there's a lot of different things. And we'll just use Green Roof United States here. I don't know why I've got that asterisk. Okay. Oh, sorry. Um, let me just, all right, we'll just do a search. Okay. So Web of Science definitely has some things. It's going to try to add some key terms for you. It'll have some quick filters, like if it's open access, it's a if it's a review article, it has things down to a publication year, 
Um, again, document type, authors. If you scroll down, though, you see even more. So countries, regions, publication sources, who the author is affiliated with. Um, you can even look, again, depending on your type of search, if you're doing biology or medical research in here, maybe you want to know what animals are in here. Um, so filters, really different across the different databases. Again, you can get really specific with them, um, but that may not always be the best idea here. So this is a word of caution just in general. Adding more requirements to your search, either adding additional search terms or additional filters will bring back fewer results. And you might get to the point where you bring back no results, okay? If this happens, that's okay, all right? Don't panic. Don't try not to get too frustrated. Remember search, I always say that searching is an art form, not necessarily science, especially when you're getting started out. Once you get into like upper level systematic, systematic searching, it's a little bit more scientific, right? But at this stage, you're typically going to try to want to be, be flexible and especially in initial stages of research. So if you do bring back, you know, really few results or no results, try using additional search terms, broaden your search terms out, narrow them down, use synonyms, find related terms, try using fewer filters and relying just on your search terms. Um, try reordering your search terms. So like how you conduct, how you kind of put together your Boolean operator strings. Maybe there's something hinky going on up there. So try to look at that. Um, and again, remember some databases are more sensitive to operators than others. So typically there's going to be documentation for specific databases. So many YouTube tutorials that are out there. We've actually built a bunch of different um, playlists on the library YouTube channel, but even looking in the databases themselves. So for example, um, in Web of Science, down in the bottom corner, there's a little question mark that you can say, oh, there's training or there's guided tours. There's online help and contact us, right? You could always contact a librarian, um, but if it's really about like, you know, something going wrong with the database, you might want to contact them. Um, with psych info. Um, again, you do have, there's a help icon up in the top and it's going to bring back some help that's talking about, you know, how to actually use Boolean and expanders, improving search results, like limiters, all that stuff is in here. Okay. Um, and even on our ex libris or our, our, excuse me, our homepage search box, which is through ex libris, um, there is additional help. You probably are going to actually have to go out and find that. But if you ever do need help within uh, our homepage search box, our Ask Us page is linked up at the top. So you can always come in, chat with a librarian, send us an email, make an appointment with a librarian as well. So we're here for you. Okay. All right. Switch back. All right. So uh, if anybody has any questions, I'll stick around for a little bit. Otherwise, uh, we have tons of tips and tricks on our uh, research process guide on our website. We have all sorts of tutorials and we're building more playlists every day. Um, and again, ask a librarian when you need help and or if you want to reach out directly to me, I am here as well. Thank you for watching this recorded webinar. Find upcoming webinars to register for at libcal.umflint.edu.